Well, it was one of my Camaros out of my shop in Hueytown. And, uh, you know, I already had, had uh, become very fond of the root courses. You know, I had, by then I had one something at Riverside. And, uh, and plus I had won a couple other road, road course races. The pace car leads the entire field around on the parade lap for this Permatex 200 modified championship road race. A good share of the race will be run on the high banked oval speedway. However, they also use a winding, twisting infield course with several right hand turns. And for these boys that are used to the short oval tracks, it's a whole new ball game. I built that car to the Grand American Rules at the time, and uh, it, it was a versatile enough that uh, I ran it in USAC a couple times. Um, USAC allowed the little cars to run, so Foyt ran a, a uh, Camaro, and uh, I beat him at Milwaukee, and, and then I beat him at Milwaukee with the Matador, with the full, the full size car. Number six had fastest time and starts on the pole. Alongside in car one is Ray Hendricks driving the Camaro. 26 Paul Radford and 61 Richie Evans have the second row spots. Then it's Jeff Bodine, Jerry Cook, and Bobby Allison. 39 cars onto the trioval. There's the green, and they're off. Already the battle is on as Troyer and Hendricks go into turn one side by side. Only 10 seconds into the first lap, at car 30, Jack Duffy spins it off the course. wind out of the infield course and onto the oval. Troyer has the lead. 26 Paul Radford is second in the Gremlin with 61 Richie Evans third. On the high banks, Bobby Allison in the Camaro number two moves up to fourth. and Maynard Troyer has that Mustang all wound out as he puts a little daylight between Radford and Evans. six like he's riding on a rail. Richie Evans is challenging Radford for the second place spot through every turn. On the front shoot, Evans takes the low groove and passes Paul Radford to grab the number two spot. Johnny Peterson loses his Ford going into turn three and goes off the track, but he whips it around and gets back in the race. And another one takes a shortcut. Charlie Blanton spins his Camaro in the turn and heads right back on the track. Turn five, Troyer begins to lap some of the slower cars. He's flying in that Mustang with Richie Evans second, Paul Radford third, and Bobby Allison fourth. Car 51 goes on a spinner. That's Roy Stammy driving a 72 Chevy. The zero car gets a push behind the wall out of the race. For nine laps, it was driven by Hollywood star Paul Newman. 
who probably wanted to find out what the real thing was all about. Troyer begins to open up a lead now over second place runner Richie Evans. Radford is third with Allison fourth and starting to move up. Field course. Paul Radford dives low under Evans, and the Gremlin is now number two. The race begins to take its toll as cars drop out for a variety of reasons. This one blew the engine. Jimmy Griffin is the driver in the Pinto number 12. At about the same time, Troyer's Mustang popped a valve, and the leader that looked so strong goes out of the race. Six Radford has the lead, but he's having handling problems. Meanwhile, Bobby Allison is second and pushing hard. Well, it had a few tight spots. It had spots where you had to take care of the brakes. And you had to shift right and do th do all the road course things right. off the track, but he gets back in a hurry. On the next lap, Radford pits his gremlin. They discover a loss in oil pressure and pull the car out of the race. With Paul in the pits, Bobby Allison streaks by in his Camaro to take over the lead. is running second and closing the gap on Allison Fast. Tiny Lund has now taken over third. The second place contender Ray Hendricks blows on the infield course and wheels his Chevy off into the grass out of the race. This gives the second spot to Tiny Lund in number five. If spin out sold for a dollar a pound, you could retire on this one. That was number 15, Bugsy Stevens. They're all looking for a shortcut. through every turn. He just returned from a road race at Riverside a couple of weeks ago, and he has a little more experience on this type of track than the other drivers. Tiny Lund is second and trying everything in the book to close on Bobby. It was pretty exciting. It was a good, good, fun track. One is just about history as Bobby Allison snakes his way through the infield course for the last time and heads onto the high banks. Tiny Lund survived long enough to finish second. John Bryant in the Gremlin number 57 takes home the third place money, and the Canadian boy Denny Giroux finishes fourth. Now Bobby pushes his Camaro down the tri-oval and under the checkered flag, winner of the Permatex 200 and a heads-up start on the 1974 Daytona Speed Week. I think, I think it's going to be a good show. Um, I think that uh, the, the modern cup guys, a lot of them are really, really tuned to this road race and stuff. They'll do a good job. And uh, the, the cars, the equipment is good. Uh, I, th I think it'll be a really fun thing to watch and, and uh, good race.